Captain John White and 115 colonists set out from England to the Americas in 1587. They founded the colony of Roanoke, the famous one that we will be discussing today. After many hardships and struggles, John White made the tantalizing decision to leave his wife, daughter, and granddaughter behind in a desperate attempt to collect supplies for the starving colonists. After three agonizing years, John White was finally able to return to the colony to reunite with his family. But upon his arrival, he found the colony of Roanoke completely abandoned. Upon further inspection, there wasn't a single trace of any item that could be carried by hand. The only clues that remained of their whereabouts were the carvings, C-R-O and Croatoan on a fence and a tree. The whereabouts of John White's family and other 115 colonists still unknown to this day. But tonight, we are going to take a deep dive into the cauldron and explore the possible fates of these lost souls. May they rest in peace. Let's go cauldron combos. <laughs> if you are watching on YouTube, I wanted to quickly ask you to consider subscribing to this channel because we will be posting weekly, if you are listening on the audio format, a download, a rating, or subscribe would be greatly appreciated. We are posting episodes every single week on spine-chilling paranormal and conspiracy topics to educate you, make you laugh, and also just entertain you. You know, we all need a little things to lighten our day, lighten our load. <laughs> Ew, that sounds gross. It's important to me that I give you guys value, so please, please, please give me feedback, any advice, any topics that you want to hear from me, I'll be happy to go into and explore. We want your load. Yeah, we need your load. And feel free to send us your feet pics at cauldronconros. <laughs> at gmail.com, an email that we need to actually register for because someone might take this before we release it if we forget to, to we get do that do three <laughs> feet ratings yes we will rate your feet and we will actually take a f we will actually photoshop ourselves sucking on your toes and send it back to you um free of charge as long as you order something on my amazon wish list because honey needs some tank tops <laughs> specifically if you order the lego sets on her wish okay, list okay no <laughs> after giovanni de verrazano de verrazano explored the outer banks in 1524 and thought it was a shortcut to China, he told King Francis I of France and King Henry VIII of England, though neither of them pursued the matter and decided to explore. However, in 1578, Queen Elizabeth I granted a charter to Sir Humphrey Gilbert to explore and colonize territories in the United States. After Gilbert's death in 1583, the charter was divided between his brother Adrian and half-brother Sir Walter Raleigh, a key player in this story. Sir Walter Raleigh was an English statesman, a soldier, and explorer that was actually one of the Queen's favorites and played a key part in the colonization of North America as a whole. And Raleigh's charter noted that he needed to establish a colony by 1591 or he would lose his right to colonization. As a result, Raleigh, representing the English, made first attempts to settle in North America on Roanoke Island, which, if you don't know where it is, is off the coast of North Carolina, now Dare County, North Carolina. The Secotin Native Americans who controlled Roanoke Island made contact with the English and established friendly relations. And these first settlers ended up returning to England because of a shortage of food as well as Native American attacks. And when they returned, they spoke actually very highly of these Native Americans. They were friendly, they, they were hospitable, and they actually got along. They even brought two Native Americans with them when they went back to England. And a year later, Sir Walter actually launched his effort to colonize America, because he only had a few years left, sending seven ships and 600 people off, and supplies to actually last them a whole year. However, their flagship actually ran aground, so a lot of the supplies fell into the ocean and they were spoiled so they couldn't use them. I don't know how this happens, I don't know how all of these, these goods were spoiled, but they were, so they ended up sending 500 of these 600 people back to England. So they got all the way there to the Americas and then they said, Actually, because our stuff got spoiled, you gotta turn around and go back. Yeah, they ran aground when they arrived. That must have sucked. They're like, oh, we're here. Yes, my diarrhea has ended. And then they hit their, oh, I gotta go back home. Three more months of diarrhea. This is horrible. It's really just horrible. As soon as they landed in Roanoke, they actually spoke with the Native Americans there and were given permission to build their colony. 
So that's pretty nice of them. Yeah, I think this backs up the reports that they were quite hospitable. Exactly. They were generous and supported the settlers, but the settlers did need more supplies. The 100 of them didn't have really anything because all of the supplies were spoiled. And because of this, the tension ended up growing between the Native Americans and the English to the point where the Native American leader actually decided, you know what? It's not worth staying here. We need to just leave. Let's give them Roanoke. Let's leave because we don't have enough to share with them. However, the English took this as uh, they're actually leaving so that they could get more Native Americans so that they come here and massacre us. So uh, to get one step a foot of them or one step ahead of them, we need to do that to them. We need to massacre them. And that's exactly what the English did, even though they had no proof that that's what the Native Americans were planning. They just assumed so. Killed a bunch of the Native American tribe that was hospitable and generous to them. And they ended up killing them basically all. Somehow, shortly after this whole thing happened where they were massacring the Native Americans, an English-bound fleet was actually passing the colony of Roanoke, and in a rush to abandon the colony, the hundred settlers or so were like, let's leave, we just massacred all these people, we have no supplies, we need to go, Sir Walter did not send us any supplies, so we need to abandon ship. They left so much in a hurry that the hundred people actually ended up only being 97 people on the ship because they left three of their people behind. Behind. So three of their people, I don't know what happened to them. Um, I hope they weren't murdered, but they probably were um, because they didn't end up on the ship. So sorry about that. And how ironic, but Sir Walter Raleigh, the one that they were relying on sending them supplies, he actually did end up sending them supplies, except it came like only a few days after they already left. So the reinforcement arrived, but there was no one there. So they just turned back around. They're like, okay, no one needs us. So we're leaving. That's what happened. And then another English fleet ended up stopping at Roanoke. They saw that no one was there. They thought this is such a waste. You know, the English conquered this area. We have a fort or or a kind of establishment. Why don't we leave people here? So that's exactly what they did. They ended up leaving 15 of their crew on Roanoke to, like the three people, fend for themselves and just deal with it. After this, John White, who was a part of the original 100 people that ended up actually being only 97 people, convinced Sir Walter Raleigh, let's go back, let's colonize. So in 1587, Sir Walter Raleigh sent John White as captain on an expedition to establish the city of Raleigh in Chesapeake Bay. But during the stop to check on those 15 crew members, you know, the ones that they did, they just left a few years before, pilot Simon Fernandez forced John White and his colonists to actually just get off the boat and remain on Roanoke. He's like, I'm not bringing you guys to Chesapeake. I don't care. Get off. This is my boat. I'm a pirate. And that's what it is. Oh, by the way, he was a pirate. He was a Portuguese navigator and also a pirate in a previous time. So uh, I don't know why they sent it to him there in the first place, probably because he was on the first mission and second mission to the new world. But still, He's untrustworthy. He just leaves these people behind. One could say he'd say, treat me like a pirate and give me that booty. Yeah, he was literally like, give me that booty or I'm getting the booty out of here. My booty out of here. I'm going, you're not going to Chesapeake. <laughs> Even unless I could Chesapeake that booty. Oh, peek that booty. Okay. <laughs> It's actually funny because the crown didn't really mind pirates as long as they weren't on the opposing side of the pirates. So as long as they were supporting the pirates, they were getting 20% of the cut of the pirates' goods that they were stealing from other ships. So they were actually fine with it. And just a few days after arriving, Virginia Dare was the first baby born to English parents on North America. Also granddaughter of John White, which is pretty iconic. John White was the leader of the colony, obviously. I said he was tasked by Sir Walter Raleigh to lead this expedition, but he had to go back to England to get more supplies. They realized shortly that they had not enough to last them at all, the 115 colonists. The colonists actually requested specifically that he return to England to go get them some supplies. They're like, you gotta go, we don't have enough, you gotta do it. So luckily, you know, our little pirate man was still by Roanoke, his ship was chilling, he was probably just chilling out there and, and John White was like, you know what, we gotta go back, I gotta get more supplies, and that's what he did. However, when they got back to England, even though they had to make a quick stop in Ireland, but when they did return to England, John White was essentially trapped there for three years and didn't return until 1590 because as soon as he got back, a major naval war broke out between England and Spain. So Queen Elizabeth I called on all ships to be used against the Spanish Armada, leaving John White 
not able to go back to his wife, daughter, and granddaughter, his new little Virginia Dare baby girl. Ew, I hate saying that. <laughs> so finally, three years later, John White is able to go back, make the long voyage across the Atlantic, and see his wife, his daughter, and his granddaughter at last. But three years come by, and he's finally walking up onto the shore of Roanoke, and he He's calling their names, he's screaming, he's happy to be there, and no one makes a peep. He goes back to the settlement that he developed and was going to be the leader of, and no one was there. Not a single trace of them besides heavy items that were not able to be carried by humans alone. And the only clue John White found was the word Croatoan, as well as the letters C-R-O, carved into a fence post, as well as a tree kind of surrounding the area that their settlement was supposed to be in. He immediately claimed and assumed that this meant that they were safe and sound as he instructed the colonists to mark a cross if they were in harm and if they had to leave in harm. So because there was no cross, he assumed that they were not in harms, they weren't in danger, and because it said Croatoan, that meant that they would be on the island just about 50 miles south of Roanoke. But to this day, no one really knows what happened to them because there's not enough evidence that they actually ended up going to Croatoan. Now, this same theory that John White claimed that they just kind of meshed in with the Croatoan tribe or just Native Americans in general is the first theory that we're going to be talking about today. So when John White originally returned to the colony, he was planning on sailing to Hatteras Island, which was at the time named Croatoan. And when he was going to do so, a winter storm was actually a brewing and he was forced to go to the Caribbean and he was actually unable to go visit the colonists for many years. Yes. So even though he did see the carving on the tree in the fence post, he actually wasn't able to prove that his daughter, granddaughter, or wife were okay living on this island only 60 miles south of Roanoke, where he you know sailed all the way to get to from england he seems a little bit too comfortable with the fact that he can't find his wife and daughter there's something <laughs> wrong with that i mean i guess it is shocking if they are just gone when he comes to return but then again it's like wouldn't you try harder to find them in the first place yeah he just seems too comfortable with it though he's too, yes he's too comfortable and secure with just saying you know declaring they're on this island and they are <laughs> completely fine and everything's good and dandy and we're just going to continue you moving on with their lives ignorance is bliss i guess but unless there's something more to that which is what we're going to be talking about so the thing with john white's claim that they went south doesn't really make sense in some ways because john white did tell people in his well he's wrote in his diary that if the colonists were to move anywhere they were going to be going north west mainland they were going to avoid being on an island because the island um does not give them the tactical advantage as as uh, mainland gives them one piece of evidence that does not prove John White's theory that they went south, but does support his argument that yes, maybe they were assimilating with a Native American tribe nearby, was that they actually went mainland. So in 2012, the British Museum actually discovered two small patches of extra paper on top of a map called La Virginia Pars, which was painted by White himself. And the British Museum discovered two pieces of paper, as I said, but under these pieces of paper were stars that signified forts back then. And one of these forts were 50 miles west of Roanoke, the same distance away that the colonists told White they planned to move if, you know, Roanoke wasn't working for them. So a piece of canvas meant that the map maker might have made an error, but it didn't really make sense. Why would a map maker make an error of putting a fort? Why would they just mark a star and be like, oh, whoops, actually there was no fort there. It doesn't make sense. But then upon further investigation, they actually saw invisible ink on top of the canvas in the same invisible ink signifying that there was a fort, but historians think that this was covered up and put in invisible ink in case the Spanish did confiscate the map. Those, that's some pro moves. Yeah. But like invisible it's ink like, in like the fifteen oh, hundreds. Accidentally put the fort there. Let me put another piece of paper and put a star. But I guess it wasn't dumb because no one noticed until how many years ago? Two thousand twelve. Yeah, he tricked the Spanish for a long time. Five hundred years. <laughs> he tricked us all for that long. So after finding this map discovery, archaeologists went to the actual fort and called it Fort X, and they wanted to set out and discover what laid underneath Fort X, or potentially what was Fort X and what fossils or artifacts could they dig up and find 
So archaeologists set out to investigate the site in just 2015, and the site was actually close to a Native American village called Metequem. And there was no sign of a fort actually, but they did find two dozen shards of English pottery. And in 2019, the search continued, which yielded more of these shards and fragments of European pottery, specifically vessels used for food preparation and storage, which they thought signified that there were long-term visitors and residents in this area called Fort X. Now, I would consider that archaeological evidence that there were Native Americans and English people assimilating into one tribe. And an often looked over theory is maybe people wonder why would Englishmen join a native tribe other than just starving. Yes. But potentially disease. If you have a disease because you have no immunity to this new world, Mm. you join a native tribe to get medicine. And then this coincides with the alleged sightings of blue eyed Native Americans in the area. Mm. And it's kind of interesting. There was a YouTube comment on a video we were looking over just doing some research and it explains how there's European lineage and European names within the local Native American tribes. Exactly. According to William Kelso, Director of Archaeology and Research at Jamestown Rediscovery, he said, What has been found so far at Site Y in Bertie County appears to me to solve one of the greatest mysteries in early American history, the Odyssey of the Lost Colony. So there are a lot of archaeologists that want to claim the same thing as William Kelso, that the pottery automatically proves that they found or they discovered the mystery behind Roanoke, that they actually just assimilated into this specific area. However, not all archaeologists believe this theory. Charles Ewan, an archaeologist at East Carolina University, told National Geographic, I am skeptical. They're looking to prove rather than seeking to disprove their theory, which is the scientific way. The co-founder of the Croatoan Archaeological Society, Scott Dowson, said, Bertie was the heart of enemy territory. It is the last place they would go. The colony literally wrote down that they relocated to Croatoan. So he doesn't believe this as well. So they're clearly opposing views from these archaeologists and historians of if it was in Bertie, if it was in Croatoan, no one really knows. And I don't think that the pottery, just because it was there in this location that was on the map, I don't think that necessarily proves that that's where all of the colonists went maybe one or two, or maybe maybe the Native Americans took their food and brought it with them. Or they just raided the camp and stole all their pottery. Exactly. And some historians and archaeologists claim that it is possible that the colonists split up. But just thinking about it theoretically, you know, maybe I'm just not as adventurous as the 115 colonists, but I would never split up from a group. I would, if I was in a place that I knew nothing about, if I was surrounded by potential enemies, potential weather that I did not know what it was going to be like, no food. Potentially sick. Yes, and I knew that other people that settled here were murdering the natives. I would not want to leave from other people. I don't like separating in the grocery store because then I have to find you. It's just a fiasco. Me too, and the greater the group, the better the chance of finding John White so he can bring us some tea and crumpets. But some... We're waiting for you, John White. Yeah, come on, John White. Where are you? Where are we've crumpets? been waiting... I've been wanting crumpets crumpets. all my life. I want my crumpets. I've been waiting for you for three years. I have no (laughs) tea, John White. worst accent John White, where's my tea? Over the last 11 years, researchers have actually dug up thousands of artifacts on Hatteras Island as well as documented by the Croatoan Archaeological Society, and they show a clear mix of Native American and English pieces as well. This team found copper rings, sword handles, earrings, a Nuremberg token... Okay, (laughs) writing slates and glass. And it all dates back to the time of the Roanoke colony. So who knows? Maybe they were there. Maybe they were somewhere else. An often overlooked theory is that disease could have wiped out the colonists, but not in the conventional way where a disease would have just killed everybody, but in the way that the disease spread throughout the colony and they reached out to the local Native American tribes to seek medicine attention, medical attention. And when they do so, it would subsequently split up the colony leading to maybe some dying, some going to this tribe, some going to that tribe. This backs one of the theories that there were blue-eyed Europeans in Native American tribes. Now, just because I am a genetic testing fan myself, part of the same theory that they assimilated into the Native Americans and, you know, had children and moved on with their happy Believe ever lives, scientists have been trying to use DNA to tell if there is a genetic link between the colonists and Native American descendants. And you can Google this and you can read all about it. But essentially, in the end, as of 2019, and 
I'm assuming as of today, because I've researched it and nothing else came to be, the project has yet to identify any living descendants of the Native Americans as well as the colonists. So they tried to prove whether or not there are people that are linked to both the Native Americans in the area as well as the colonists from England. But they do not have any of the 430-year-old bones to prove this at all or find anyone that was descendants of these people. So the theory is kind of like, you know, put to, to poop until they find bones. Put so the poop. Gotta send those dogs out there. Throw the Clifford, poop in the cauldron. You there? Clifford? In the early 1600s to middle 1700s, European colonists actually claimed to have met gray-haired Indians, as you were talking about, who claimed to have been descended from white settlers. In 1696, French Huguenots left records of meeting blonde-haired, blue-eyed Indians soon after their arrival on along the Tar River. In 1709, John Lawson, in his book A New Voyage to Carolina, records Croatoans living on Croton Island who claim that they used to live on Roanoke Island and they claim to have white ancestors. William Strachey also claimed to have seen Pekarinak, Pekarkanik, and Okanhoin, Indians living in two-story stone houses that the English showed them how to build. The second theory is that the Native Americans attacked the colonists. In 1607, Englishmen confronted Chief Powhatan, mm -hmm. and he confessed to murdering them. Oh, I saw that. That was the same one as from Pocahontas. And he, John Smith, confronted him. Pocahontas. Oh my baby. God, that was right. I and thought. that's the yeah. But some people do do say that he did stretch this to kind of like front. He was kind of like I got big balls, so I'm just gonna say that I killed them all. Even John they Smith that is a diddler, so I don't know if I true. trust him. No, this is the lead. This is the the dad of Pocahontas, right? Yeah, the, the captain or the captain. Pocahontas's father admitted to killing them and then proceeded to show John Smith, the white guy in Pocahontas, all of this stuff that he stole <gasps> from them. How about that? He was trying to flex on him, maybe. Flex on him. But, but there, he, I mean, how do we know it was the lost colony, though? How do we, we know? We don't. That? That's exactly. The thing. There's no proof. There's nothing that, you know, I watched this one documentary when where this old guy was sifting through this water, this murky water to the never eat soggy waffles east of Roanoke. <laughs> and basically he was like, I'm just looking for Virginia Dare's little pinky ring thing. Or er, yeah, pinky ring, not the finger. That would be gross. He's looking for a pinky ring that was personalized. This is why everyone needs to wear personalized jewelry. Please wear in your initials on your jewelry in case you were ever lost in a colony and people needed to prove where you were because that would help tremendously in this situation. Thank you for the Out PSA. 115 people, not one person had something that was personalized. Hello, you have no embroidered notebook? You have no fur coat with your little stinky smell in it? Or like bones? I don't know. This is 2022. The fact that they don't know what happened to this colony in 15, what, 90 something? Hello? Well, that's part of the reason why they don't know, because it was 1590. Yeah, but people also claim that the, the area surrounding it, they do know. They just don't want to say anything because they have a lot of tourism because of this. It's this unsolved secret. mystery. Yeah. Oh, everyone goes to the Get out of here. Anyway, let's continue. In the 1930s, a stone was actually found by a man, and he actually turned it into a museum. And it was written by Eleanor Dare, the daughter of John White, a.k.a. the mother of Little Virginia Dare, the baby that was the first English-born baby in the North Americas. And on this stone, she detailed that half of the colony was wiped out by Native Americans, and then another percent was taken captive, and only, I believe, seven remained to be fine, including herself. That was on one side. I have the actual inscription. It says, right, Anais it. Dare and Virginia went hence unto heaven. 1591. Anye Englishman Shu, John White, Governor Via. Oh, no. That was on one side. And then I think the other side just said seven people left. Everyone else got capped. <laughs> bra, bra. So after this original stone was proven to be real in 1937 by a Harvard professor, 47 more stones were located, which dated from 1592 to 1599. A stone dated to 1592 stated that the survivors of the Roanoke colony are safe and living happily in the Nahochi Valley in Georgia. Another dated to 1598 stated that Eleanor Adair was married to a local chief and had given birth to his daughter and that she wished that her father were to take that daughter back to England and they were very upset with that. How about that? After this discovery of the stones, they were brought to the Smithsonian Institute to be examined by a Harvard professor and the professor declared that the stones had some degree of authenticity. However, in 1941, the stones had been exposed as forgeries. 
Oh, no. Later in 2015, there was a documentary produced by the History Channel that did an in-depth study of the stones, to which a team of archaeologists did manage to authenticate the first stone, which is the one that claimed that there were only seven people Mm -hmm. left and that What's-Her-Face died. The first one, yep. Yeah. However, they did find that the other ones were hoaxes, the 47 Hmm. other stones. So I wonder why they would prove that all the other ones were hoaxes, but the first one was real. Like, I wonder what was different. Well, they came to the conclusion that the 47 additional ones were carved with a drill. They didn't Oh, I did see that. I forgot about that. All we know is the first stone seems to be legit, Uh, according to these people. I don't know, though. Like, how do these people authenticate a stone? I say the first stone is a PSA 10, perfect condition. Like, how did, then how did, or not Virginia, how did... What's her favorite? I think they look so some of the damning factors was it was in the correct language using the correct tools and dated to the correct time. What tools were they using? I don't know. A chisel. Teeth? (laughs) Eleanor Dare's body was found with no teeth because she was chewing on stones. Another theory is that they tried to sail back to England alone when they realized that they were running low on supplies and they got lost at sea, but that wouldn't really explain the writing on the tree. Why wouldn't they write something like ENG or England or home. We're going back home. Or why wouldn't they write literally anything more than just CRO or Croatoan? And like the odds of 115 people and not one of them thought to leave any more clues than just that. Like there were 115 people. You think one of them were to be like, oh, right, let me like leave a letter. Right? 100%. I didn't I, find it, but. I think they left not consensually. Ooh based on just the lack yeah. of evidence i mean he they did say they're going to roanoke i mean they could have gotten sick or something but i think something bad happened me too another theory of something bad happened was cannibalism that there were like accounts of cannibalism in the past or in jamestown afterwards this kind of ties into a native american theory native americans are very spiritual individuals and they still are and they believed in a creature called the wendigo which is a spirit that consumes the person once you eat human flesh. At least that's this version of the Wendigo. I've heard many different versions. That's what they're saying. Another spirit, which is a little bit more spiritual, a little bit more with one with the land, is a spirit that basically punishes people for pillaging the land. So say the colony of Roanoke, they took all the resources from the land, gave nothing back. The spirit turns people into trees and rocks and things around it. Yeah spooky a little bit more out there but i did see other out there kind of theories like maybe ufos oh took get them. out of here <laughs> they got maybe probed. They were possessed by witches maybe they were witches if they're you doing probes at roanoke i'm gonna be there tomorrow yeah i was there yesterday actually it was quite dandy for me well it's funny you said witches because they thought that the native americans thought that witches lived in those woods yeah which Along is with the reptilian spooky. devil. Holy smokes. It's like the Blair Witch Project. Ooh. Did you talk about the reptilian devil? I did not talk about the reptilian devil, but another evil spirit believed by the Croatoan is a reptilian devil of the woods. It is a spirit that could attach itself to people that would make them violent, greedy, and paranoid. And the Croatoan believed that the spirit possessed the settlers when John White left for England when they began to turn on themselves. As a result, there are a lot of societies, foundations that are trying to investigate what happened to the lost colony of Roanoke. However, there's not enough concrete evidence, at least in my opinion and a lot of historians' opinions, to declare what actually happened to them. But we hope that it does come out as long as we're alive because I would like to know. It's very interesting. Yeah, I just want to make something abundantly clear. I feel like we've been very uh, accusatory of the Native American tribes and saying, oh, they ate them, oh, this, that, or that. You read that online but there is zero evidence that any of the tribes in the area partook in cannibalism or sacrifice sacrifice or even murdered anybody yeah and a lot of the the evidence that we have and we have to go on or off of are accounts by people that are white and from england and are colonists like john white we have his diary that has a lot of writings however Girl, that's his, his name point of is view. john white get the f out of that's here that's his story that's his truth but is it the truth maybe not who knows maybe john white was like eh, i'm having an affair with someone back in england i don't really want to find my wife let's just pretend like there's a storm and not go here he was gone for three years if no one was in the roanoke colony he would lose his title so i mean it's all for his benefit that they disappeared or that they were taken by the natives there's also another theory that someone in the court actually purposely you know 
had these 100 people go to basically their death. They knew that they weren't going to survive because they wanted Sir Walter Raleigh to not be the fave of the queen. They wanted him to lose his charter of the land and so kind of sent this mission or perpetuated this mission to happen. However, that's just another theory. There's so many theories and we can't really conclude what happened, but... Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to our takes on these theories, our research, our collection of the theories. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you're listening on audio, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Give it a rating if you feel inclined to do so. And make sure to come back every single week because we're going to do something spooky. We're going to do some conspiracy stuff, maybe even true crime. We don't know yet, but we're going to be consistent. We're going to post weekly and we're going to be here in high quality for you guys because this is our passion and we love what we do and if you guys have any recommendations on what we should cover feel free to drop it in the comment section below or send us an yeah. email yes and you can send me an email at lovekray at gmail.com baby i don't have a, i should get that email domain maybe i'll have that email domain by the next time we talk if it's not already taken it's either going to be cauldronconvos at gmail.com or cauldronconvos 6969 at gmail.com depending on the availability and please make the subject feet pics thank you thank you in advance Thanks, guys, so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on Cauldron Convos. Woo! Ew, I hate that.